um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Valo and the guests. Um, what's going to happen this evening is uh, we're going to talk a lot about Dr. Valo, of course. But we're also going to talk uh, quite a bit about the Mastiff, Aldo, uh, Mastiff even. Because in the end, we have to talk about Massimo Napolitano, the Neapolitan Mastiff. I like to, to talk um, whatever breed, whatever Mastiff breed I focus on on certain evening, like this uh, get together. I like to take other breeds, similar breeds along, to, uh, just to compare, because judging is all about comparing, and what, what counts for the Mastiff breeds is that there are so many, uh, they are so similar in so many ways, but they're all uh, distinct, uh, very distinct, very different in, in essential features, which uh, makes a dog at all different from a bull mastiff, etc. So, um, and certainly with, with the dog at all, which is so close, in fact, to a bull mastiff in principle, let's start there. Um, yeah, it's it's really essential to to focus on those two breeds because it will help you to understand what a good dog at all uh, should be. Talking about bull mastiffs and, and dog at all. Until this very day, it even happened uh, uh, last weekend, judging bull mastiffs uh, over here, but it, it's something which is happening all over the world still. Uh, you can come up with a bull mastiff, which you would say, well, this dog, this particular bull mastiff, will be better off in a dog to Bordoring, and vice versa. So that's how, how close they are. So the, in uh, Triquet, uh, the French father of the breed, talks about uh, their nephew and niece in, in that respect. Um, Mastiff is, is a breed I'm going to mention for sure. Mastino is a breed I'm going to mention. I'm sorry to say that I have to mention the breed because um, the latest development in Dr. Bordeaux is as such that we get a certain type, which we call Mastino Napolitano type. So it's a, a new hypertype of Dr. Bordeaux. Early on we had a hypertype of Dr. Bordeaux, which was similar to Bulldog, so Bulldog characteristics creeping in. But now there's something new, like a new Palatine Mastiff. Uh, qualities creeping in and uh, creates something new, uh, very impressive, breathtaking for many people. It's a cross between a uh, bulldog and Mastino Napolitano. It's called Dog de Bordeaux. It's winning champion tickets, but it's wrong. Um, and it's also that's why uh, in France, not too long ago, they've come up with uh, a list of uh, a sort of guideline to say no to this particular type. So that, but that's at the end of the evening. I'm not going to talk too much about the standard. I assume that you have read the standard, that you have studied the standard, and that before you go to judge the breed, that you read the standard, the evening before, that's what I do. Of course, we're going to talk a lot about the standard, but I'm not going through uh, uh, phrase by phrase, paragraph by paragraph. We got, but we're going to refer to it as much as you want. And as far as you is concerned, I would say if you want to have the best out of me, um, ask as many questions as you want. The more you interrupt me, the better it will get. So please be free and blunt and brutal, whatever. Ask whatever you want to ask. If I have to start a monologue, which I'm doing really too long, then it's, it's not that good. So please ask. I'm also going to work with the dogs. So as soon as I have the dogs here, I also become better, I like to think. I become more easygoing. Uh, and it also means that we're not going to work from uh, let's say nose point, nose point to uh, tail end. We're just going to look at dogs, we're going to compare, and that's what we do all the time. Uh, I'm very pleased with the bull mastiff you're having here. It's a perfect example of bull mastiff, and a perfect example of qualities we do not want to have in a dog. So she's going to be here, I'm sorry to say, a lot. <laughs> so it's better to bring over uh, her and her basket over here, that she can sit, because I'm going to ask her to, to, to join in a lot. There's another dog that I really would like to work a lot with, and it's this black masked bitch. So she also has to be close to me a lot. And I would like to work with that particular pool of meat. We're not going to live in that long, but still we want to work with also both. Just for my information, so that I know to whom I can uh, direct my preach. Uh, who is um, a Dr. Bordeaux breeder? Wait, that's quite a bit. 
who are uh, uh, judges of Dr. Bodo. Good, good number. You you qualify to do the whole group utility. Yeah. Counts for all all the judges who put their hand up. Any all round judges? Good, good. Yeah. We're gonna have a lot of things. Gonna work with you. Gonna have uh, we we need. No, just just leave, leave them a bit, no worry. <coughs> so once again, I will, ask, I will not repeat anymore. More, the more practice you have, the better. So interrupt from any moment. Don't wait, interrupt. Um, what is shown perfectly by these three dogs, the bull the dog de Bordeaux and the bulldog, is that the dog de Bordeaux is a bull mastiff going direction a bulldog. So it's very much a breed in between the two extremes, the bull mastiff and the bulldog. Um, when we look at the bulldog, we see a, a very deep set, massive toe, with compared to his small size and enormous head, with a squashed face, up to, uh, up to nose, and we see a body um, which is pear-shaped in an extreme way. We, we see a lot of depth and width of front, and a body hanging really between its front legs. When we look at the bull mastiff, we see a true athlete, clean cut, uh, square, so as uh, he's as high as it's, as it's uh, long, and we see uh, a clean cut front, especially in, in, in front. That means that there's not much extra belt there. It is broad set, but not uh, anything but a, a bulldog front. And so it's, it's clean. It's a normal shoulder conformation. There's a normal uh, 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 what is it? Normal balance between depth of body and length of legs. Um, it's also it's, it's an impressive head. It's uh, strongly developed, but it, it fits in the picture. It's nicely balanced. It doesn't come towards you as a real impressive head. When we look at the dog de Bordeaux, we can see you see here a smaller sized bitch. That means that uh, they can be a bit smaller than the minimum size of a bull mastiff. Doesn't matter. It's really good. And then we see a balance uh, of uh, a slightly longer casted dog. And what's extremely important, uh, a dog which is uh, deeper set than the bull mastiff is. So he has more depth of body than length of leg. It doesn't mean to say that he's short legged, that's another thing, but the body depth should go below the elbow, meaning the depth of body is a bit more than the length of leg. Another important thing compared to the bull mastiff is that it's an impressive head, it's a stronger head. If you're really going to measure, might not be that different, but she is smaller, so she gives the impression of a bigger head. And she, yeah, so that's about the balance. Uh, and now, well, what I already said, she is slightly longer than uh, uh, than the bull mastiff is. And what's uh, an, another important quality, what we already said about depth of body, also creates a different underline than the bull mastiff. The bull mastiff is rather straight; should have a bit of tuck up. The uh, the, the amount of tuck up in a dog de Bordeaux is not that that more, um, it, uh, but because of this deep underline, you get a kind of a harp underline, which is extremely vital for the silhouette of a dog de Bordeaux. Makes it very that puts the breed very much different from the bull mastiff. Um, what, what we have not mentioned yet is when we look in front of the dog. And you can clearly see that it's very wide. It's bulky. In, in a bull mastiff, this would be uh, a loaded front. Okay? Too, too much muscle, especially on your arm. And it's highly typical for the dog de It's an essential feed, uh, uh, quality. But they are, in fact, like that broad that uh, the front legs are coming a bit closer. And they could correct a bit by the pastins going out slightly. The feet going out slightly. It's all about balance. 
to give the front the, the natural the, the natural uh, strength and ability to, to stand the weight standing now. This is all in the standard, this is all what we like to see, it's all <coughs> the policies we really want to go for, and we and, and especially with the, the front we say this is Dr. Bordeaux and we don't want to have this clean straight front which is typical Bumastiff. But uh, it's not that wide as a bulldog front. And the essential difference between a front, uh, the front of the Dr. Bordeaux and that of the bulldog is that the upper arm of the Dr. Bordeaux is like a normal dog, meaning following what the ribs are dictating underneath. With the bulldog, you have an upper arm which, which uh, curves uh, to the, uh, to, uh, how do you say it properly? Curves slightly outwards and that because it's uh, slightly going outwards and with this enormous ma mass of ma uh, massive body, the, the front is gonna hang, with the, the ribs are gonna hang between the front legs. That's because this curvy upper arm. And if, of course you can't feel it properly, but if you see here is the, the point line. <laughs> if you're just going to watch here, there's, here you can see that it's curved outside. And with a good bulldog front, you, have a, you need at least two, two fingers between uh, ribs <coughs> and elbows and to, to say well now it's hanging that it really is this uh, typical the bulldog front which makes it different from Dr. Bordeaux. This particular uh, front shape of Dr. Bordeaux and bulldog uh, gives also a pear shaped body what the bullmaster should not have. Um, that's then um, what I'm going to say now is uh, you only can really, uh, you only can uh, judge it carefully if you're going to stand at the other side of the dog. So that's why I often see with especially the bulldog judges, those with dog over dog judges, and I like to do the same with uh, my judge for mastiffs, is that you walk behind to see the balance between front and ribs and hind quarters. In bull mastiffs, you want to have a clean cut look throughout, which he shows perfectly. There's not much seen in the bull mastiff, I have to say. And that means that the um, bull master should be as wide in front as over the ribs and the hind quarters. She is a, a bit of her, she's already seven, so she is, I'm sure when she was old, younger, that she had the, the, the thighs and development of the hind quarters to, to balance it. But this is perfect, even though she's a bit, I shown a bit like here, because of age, it's still really, really good. When you look at the bulldog, you see an extreme appear shape because of this particular peculiar upper arm formation and it goes together with barrel ribs as round as possible and it goes together with a really light but still strong athletic kind of hindquarters. If you look above it's an extreme pea shape. Again a good example, Dr. Rodol is something in between Bulldog and Brumastiff. He you see as a light pea shape. So when you look on top of the dome you not only need to sorry, uh, you see uh, a real front party with extreme quality of muscles on the upper arm. You see a uh, very strong uh, spring of rib or barrel ribs. And you see uh, uh, the quality of the loins strong in itself, but compared to the front party, the front and ribs, it's lightly developed. So all the same counts for headquarters, well developed here, first and second eyes all there. But compared to his front party, it's lighter, but it may never be this extreme pear shape of the bulldog because then it's a, and it probably is the case of too much uh, rib cage, barrel ribs, but often it's the problem of hindquarters which are not strong enough. And I wish you could see them on top because it says so much, uh, gives so much information, but uh, perhaps we can do it later when you want to go over the dog, etc. But a big message for all judges especially, Please also, uh, if, if you're not doing it already, make it into a, a habit to look on the dog, if it's a full master, if you go to the bulldog, to look on top of what, uh, what information is given by front, ribs, loins, and high quarters. I, I tell you, often I make the, the definite decisions what I'm going to do uh, when, I, when I really have looked uh, the last round by going just, uh, just behind the dogs and seeing what's there. 
me is for me is extremely important. You don't ask any questions. I don't like one of those, so you have to ask something. <laughs> I've got one. Yeah, there you are. Yeah. Did you say a heart? Yes. What was the word? Yes, heart. Oh. It's my uh, word. Yeah. Uh, you know, harp is, is that's the right name for the instrument. Yeah. 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 Okay. I guess because she said two years. <coughs> yeah. No, I, I think she's she's. Uh, explain. Um, well, so they just get them get her up as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, as as you know, the standard of the boom has to said the light is not not whippy. Not straight as a Mastino, but a bit of tucker. So I like the fact that we should have the same amount of tucker, or mastiff, and Dr. Bodo. We talk about athletic mastiff breeds. No, no difference there. And, and, and in that respect, they uh, are the same, or mastiff and Dr. Bodo, compared to mastiffs and Mastino, which should have a, a deep loin and almost flat underneath. So in terms of loins, on top and bottom, it's the same story. But because the underline of a Dr. Bordeaux is lower and starts below the elbow, there is a bigger difference to get to the loin. And there, and, a, and the heart line is there because you want to have a long, you want to have plenty of width, but you also want to have plenty of length of ribcage. So the heart line can only be there if the, uh, if the brisket is, starts below the elbow but also if this is a long line of long ribs. So you see dogs which are too short in rib, and then they become, and then they rip up too quickly, and you never get this long, beautiful, so it's a real nice, slow, nice sloping line. And if a bull massive that would have that, they would say he's too fat, he, he, he loses his athletic appearance. And so what she is having, and this is, this is really 50-50, and there are plenty of boom masses which have a bit more depth of body, and still you would not make a remark about it. And so, but that's why I really like her as a uh, uh, comparison. She is uh, really 50-50. Clear? Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? This is uh, just uh, <coughs> what, what I try to do is just to, to, uh, to come up with the uh, the first uh, similarities and, and differences when you f have, a, uh, have a first look around when you see a bull mastiff or a dog or a bulldog. Later on, we're going into the finer details, and about the heads, of course, we can go on forever. to go on with the heads and then uh, no <laughs> <laughs> because there are a lot of differences just just in general I, I did do a bit of preparation this afternoon uh, first of course I had a look at the, the, of if the Australian standard is the same as the, the FCI standard and in principle it is there's a bit of uh, only two or small three differences are there um, but which are not even differences but I, I still want to to focus on them, so that we have to mention that before we go on with the head. Um, when you look at the FCI standard, um, there is the mention uh, that the, uh, the maximum length of the nose is a third uh, and the minimum length of the nose is a fourth. It is also mentioned in the Australian standard, but not in the first part of the standard. So, uh, so my first impression was, oh, here we have a vital difference between Australian and, and French and FCI, but that's not the case. They only left it up for one reason or another, and let's say the first part of the standard. So the paragraph which focuses on the, on the head, it's, it's mentioned there. Uh, another thing, and that's, that's what I really like, is that the, the Australian standard explains what is tra trapezium shape head. It's, it's difficult uh, to 
to, uh, to explain, and I think they have done a really good job. So, praise on the Australians and who has done it, but it is a really good uh, explanation. And it's an essential, an essential difference between Dr. Uh, Bordeaux and Romastic. So, so that's a difference, um, and then of course what is a difference, but it's not, it has not been with the standard itself, is that the FCI standard has a, uh, quite a talk about the, uh, about the history of the breed, where the breed is coming from. They talk about Toulouse type, Bordeaux type, etc. But it's not, uh, it doesn't make a big difference. Um, one, more two, one more thing about uh, the standard. Um, people who are qualified to judge all these working breeds, the utility breeds, as you put them over here, you'll be surprised probably by the length of the standard. It's very much a French standard, and if you compare it to the Bullmaster standard, uh, it's, it, it's at least almost four times as long, four times as detailed as, as the Bullmaster standard. So it's very much showing, uh, let's say, the European, the continental way of dealing with a standard. What the cattle club, the English cattle club, is doing with these standards. So, and personally, I really do like the Total World Standard. I think it's very detailed. And uh, all the, when we go back to, again to the Blue Mastiff, all the differences between the two breeds are easily picked up when reading the standards, comparing the two standards. And if you want to count, if you go for this uh, comparison between Blue Mastiff and Total World, we should come at least to 25 vital differences which are there in the standard to be picked up. So good, good, two good standards, two good standards to work with. Okay. Um, yeah, before we go to hands, I, I want to make a remark about, uh, uh, about the Mastiff, and so that they can pay some last uh, bit of attention to the, the balance of the dog. The Mastiff, as, as you all might know, I hope you know, is uh, uh, part of the heritage of the dog world. That's why we still have the black mask. This is a perfect way of the perfect uh, black mask, by the way. Again, a big difference between the mastiff and the dog. But the mastiff was used at the uh, uh, change, of the, change of the former century in France. It, created, it gave us the black mask, but it also gave us a, a dog world, which we still see uh, in, the, in the ring today, which is big. But as soon, it's, it's a, a very important les lesson, if, if you want to write down something, then under, uh, write this and underline it. As soon as your dog or dog gets too big, or let's say in the upper part of the standard, it's extremely difficult to get the balance right, to get the proportions right. The best dog or dog have always been the small ones. And I remember well, uh, every time I've been to uh, France from N71, you had to search more or less to get the real tiny dog of the door. You easily would walk past them by if you had a middle class of 20, 30, 40 dogs. If you just come in there for the first time, you would go for the mastiffs. Uh, but you have to learn from, uh, from the connoisseurs of the breed by just bringing in these dogs of the, uh, for the last uh, class, the before and place ones, and then they get placed to, to be seen by all people. They are always the small That's also the danger with these uh, new uh, hyper type. They're often big dogs and they are more substantial and more in balance than mastics. So it's tricky stuff. We'll talk about it later. But to come back to the mastiff, as soon as you see uh, a big dog of a dog, it's very difficult to get this balance of a big headed, low set, slightly long cast dog. As soon as you get massive size, then the head gets smaller, and you will lose the, the depth of body. They will become a bit higher on the leg, they also become a bit shorter coupled, and they become normally much better uh, built if, if you look from a uh, normal dog perspective. So, it's, it's, uh, especially for all round judges, they like to go for a massive like dog because it's better proportion, more pleasing to the eye if you're looking different breeds all the time. Excuse me? Yes, exactly. Fred on the sides as well. Yeah, exactly. So you will lose also the width in front. You will lose this typical bulky front. You get a nice and straight in front. 
but it, that goes together with this flatter of sides. Do you want to? <coughs> um, having said that, mastiffs in, in the, the mastiff type in Dogger Below is something in what is disappearing, meaning that the quality, the average quality of the breed is of a much better kind than what we had, let's say, five to ten years ago. But still it's there, and I mention it to say, well, please, uh, keep away from it as soon as you think, oh, it is nice, it looks nicely balanced, uh, nicely constructed, nicely in the sense of uh, <coughs> and like uh, any person who likes dogs and has a good eye for a dog would like it, then there's something wrong. Thank you very much. Okay, hands. I will start with the bull mastiff. It's easier. Because what we're going to do with the bull mastiff head is what you have here. We're going to uh, dress up a bit, if that's correct English, um, to get qualities in of the bulldog. But it never should end up like a bulldog because then you have a hyper type, a bully type, so we don't want. So, but the, the base for a dog to bulldog head, we really can use the bull mastiff. The essential difference there, but as a base, is really. What do we see here? A square head. Square from all angles. Um, we see a, a dog with a, a strongly defined stop. We see a dog with wide set uh, eyes. And we see a dog with a blunt muzzle. It's uh, wide, deep, broad, whatever. It's all there. We see also uh, a, a bit of chin. The people who are in bull mastiffs. Uh, no, there is quite a bit of variation in the uh, That has everything to do with that we want to have this particular blunt muscle and it's so extremely difficult to get this with a level mouth. Still, it's a little massive standard. It should be a level mouth. They uh, allow a bit of undershot. Um, but if you look at the more massive heads, when it's uh, of, of in the past, in the time when the standard was drawn up, they had a much longer head. And that longer head it was much easier to create that level mouth. So the standard has not changed, but the domestic head has changed a lot. It changed after the war. It's the, before that time, it was had shorter <coughs> headed domestics. But this, uh, this particular head, you can say it's a modern domestic head, which started to become popular after the war. And now we have them in the most beautiful, impressive ways. But having said that, it's extremely difficult to combine this with the left hand. So slightly undershot is there. She is slightly undershot because she's shown quite a bit of cheek. I would say the ideal bull mastiff head perhaps should show a bit less cheek. I will say on forehand, I'm not too uh, crazy about teeth. I don't mind too much. But when we talk about differences between bull mastiff and uh, the chin mark is extremely difficult. Ex sorry, extremely important. Um, but what you see here is um, also a, a, a head uh, which is rather dry. She gives a bit of wrinkles now because the tension is there. And we see a small ear. Uh, ear carriage is uh, perfect. Um, and what we also see is hardly any lip. The lips uh, development is just to make uh, the face and the muzzle extra square, and that's about it. And what we see to give the, the, this uh, ultimate square look is uh, quite a bit of cheek. Um, and I like to think that that quality, that particular quality, is uh, ex that is, if, if there is one quality in a, in a bull mastiff head which sets the breed aside from all the other mastiff breeds, then it's cheeks. In a bull mastiff, I want to see a lot of cheeks. For me, that's, that's an essential, more than in, in the other breeds. Um, talking about those small details, um, uh, when you compare it to the Dr. Wadov standards, you will notice that there are quite a few differences, which makes it easy, in principle, to go for the differences between breeds. But if, for instance, you compare with the mastiff standard, um, 
proves quite difficult to find the differences when we have two stars. So this is domestic, this is which also means there's a lot of culture, a lot of interpretation, uh, what various breeders and judges have for open time to say, this has become domestic, this has become domestic. And as far as I'm concerned, coming back to those cheeks, that's domestic. That's both in all those mastiff standards, but it's there in the boom mastiff, and it puts the breeds aside. So I love to see the cheeks as this lady has. Um, a quality which is going to change, I'm sorry to say, which she has in a perfect state, but uh, that's the amount of wrinkles, as I already said. And the standard is very clear, uh, not in repose, only. Is it correct or is it not in post only when attention is not Nowadays in the bull master thing, we find plenty of dodo below. Uh, sorry, plenty already dodo below, so there there you are, I know it is. We have too many wrinkles, too much wrinkle. And because we have these master breeds which are so similar, if I in a dodo below it becomes extremely important to have those wrinkles, but the other way around is that we have to criticize the master have the same amount of wrinkles. So to go massive to bring and judges, I want to say, become more strict to the amount of wrinkles. Because you get this double Madoni look, which we do not want to have the domestic, it should be the only have a bit of wrinkles when the attention is on. I know that the American standard asks it differently. Excuse me? Louder? Louder. I know that the American standard in Bumestis asks something differently. They give permission, they give room for more wrinkles. And it's not for nothing that since we have used, for good reasons, don't get me wrong, American Bumestis, that these, this type of Bumestis is coming in for good reasons. But it doesn't mean to say that we have to go for this American look. Because we have to deal with a Dr. Bordeaux as well. And it's very important to keep these breeds as separate as possible, despite the fact that they in principle the same. And wrinkles is one of those characteristics to say, clean is more massive, wrinkly, with dewlap and whatever it is, what's nice in the dog model should not be more massive. Another, I just keep on going, it's, I expect a totally different EPs. I don't give you space enough, do I? Yeah? Um, so that's wrinkles, that's muzzle. Um, another thing which is essential for a mask um, is the squareness of the skull. And you like to think, well, this is also square head, square skull. It's not. You can have Dr. Bodo uh, with uh, square skulls, which give the, the same impression as the mastiffs. So, what are we talking about? It's very wrong in, in, uh, in Dr. Bodo. In, in Dr. Bodo, we, we speak about this trapezium shape of head. And if we look at the bull mastiff, let's start with her. Can you give her a <laughs> What I mean with square is that. Wait. Okay. That's, Principle, it should be uh, as wide in the back as it is here in front. This is almost the case with her. We talked about the female. So, this extreme head is, it is a perfect square head. Of course, it's not easy to get, but she comes very close to it. And as you can see, uh, you really have to look here and compare to see if it's that it's not completely perfect. So, this is 98%. But if you will have this kind of, of uh, skull shape in a dog at all, What you'd like to say now? There is it's a, it's a very typical head. Uh, I'm going to talk about stop and eyebrows, which again sets the breed as, uh, makes the breed very different uh, from the mastiff. But if you talk about a trapezium shaped head, which starts here with a bit more width here compared to this, it becomes a um, more this kind of a line. She could have a bit more. And so she, but she has a, a longer head than she is wide. That helps to get this trapezium shape. And when you compare her, she really is 
it is his one medicine to say is as long as she is white. Uh, but to be hypocritical, uh, this is that is already the, the length of skull compared to the width gives already the first set of a trapezium, trapezium shape uh, skull. But she should be she bit yeah, she needs a bit more here. Yeah. And then, uh, what you already could have seen when she was asked for attention, when she was asked for attention, her ear set shows a bit high, which has to do with that she could do it. There are small details, the ideal head is not there, not in the room as if not in the book. Not everything not only here today, but it's not there. <laughs> but when you look at those two faces, and now we come to I have to say the trapezium shape quality, it, it took me quite some time to uh, appreciate it, to say that this makes the dog a little totally different from uh, the Bomastic. It's not that different from the Mastic though, because it's not that much with that many words in the standard, but also the Mastic has, should be a bit of a trapezium for the uh, skull. But what, what is much more important and what's much more easy to see is that the dog the dog face is totally different from the more massive face. It's totally different from the massive face and the massive face. What I try to say is we talk about short muscle bones with plenty of stuff and strong muscles, but what the face is doing dictates the different types. So when we talk about uh, more massive and short the bordeaux, these two are perfect examples. We talk about bitches, by the way, which don't have these uh, enormous qualities and heads in terms of stop and eyebrow and whatever. But these two, these two females, shows exactly what, uh, what uh, makes it a real nice bull master and a real nice dog of model. And that's the amount of stop and the amount of eyebrow. In other words, uh, the bull master has a nice deep stop abroad, uh, has quite a development of eyebrow. But if you compare it to the dog of Bordeaux, you see a deeper, wider stop there, and you see more development of eyebrow, accentuated by some extra wrinkles around it. And so this is, um, and again, this are, these are not the, the most impressive heads to the most typical heads, but in terms of going direction, uh, uh, overdone, have hypertype, but and they're very much in the middle of the standard, and still you can see that there is uh, quite a bit. So you go for a deeper stop, more wider set, um, uh, eye set, and you go for eyebrows and go for mm -hmm. yeah? yeah? When I talk about eyebrows, I mean, it's just exactly this, as if it's, if it's uh, uh, accentuated by, by a pencil. Right? Just, uh, and uh, especially in males, you see it even more clearly. But the, and for this bitch, for her size and the size of her head, she shows a very impressive appearance. So it's a deep stop, and extra eyebrows here, accentuated by a bit of extra wrinkle. And if, if you can see now, she is. It's quite a bit of fear, but uh, I want to. to uh... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Every time when you look at the bull mastiff head, you see cheeks. First, what you see is cheeks, as far as I'm concerned. Again, compared to the Dogo Mado. Also, the standards in the Dogo Mado ask for well developed cheeks, but you don't see it. It's there, but it's not that impressive. Yeah? No, okay. <laughs> what is it? What is it? And another. Uh, I'll keep on going with the cheeks, uh, despite the fact that we have a double with all even. Uh, but uh, it's another thing with the, the new uh, influence in bullmastiffs. The English have always been very critical of small ears, or well set small ears. And how, how difficult it is to get small ears well set is that we have always those those rosy, like funny carried uh, flying ears. Here's a perfect ear. And because it's small and well carried, it's able to show this extra quality of cheek. But as soon as you have those bigger ears, well carried but still going over the, the cheeks, 
like we put in the black case doctor Bordeaux, then it doesn't show that much. So it's an extra reason to go for that small ear to see all that sugar. And when we talk about this um, American influence, and again, American dogs have been used, have imported for the good reason and doing a, good, a lot of good stuff. Um, it's not that easy for the American dog in general to get this real small quality condition. Yes. Okay. Right. So it's extremely important. Deeper stop. Um, extra quality of eyebrow. Uh, extra uh, wrinkling here to, to make that clear. Uh, now we go on for the muzzle. We already said something about uh, the front part of the muzzle. If you go for this level mouth, it also means to say that you uh, you, you can't go for a, a real pronounced chin. And it also means that you can't go for lay back. And uh, lay back in optima forma, if that's English, it's Latin anyway, and it shows the bulldog, of course. And now he, the way he's standing is, it shows the bulldog. And so that's, that's really what you see here in, in the bulldog, is that the nose comes so far back because of this lay back and this enormous turn of underjaw. So there's an enormous uh, uh, diff uh, difference in length between upper and under jaw. And because of this special turn up of under jaw, this upswing, uh, creates this uh, extreme layback. And in, in, in bulldogs, the ideal is to, to have a, 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 that you can draw a line between a point of chin, point of nose, and point of oxygen. Extremely difficult to get, but they are there <coughs> quite a few, so that's what we for the bulldogs. In Bulmestis, we don't want to have anything of layback. Layback starts uh, with a bit rise of nose, a bit of lifted nose. In Bulmestis, even in the standard, it says no, it should be straight. It helps to give the Bulmestis breed a square look, a square muzzle from all sides. So you don't want to have too much chin, you don't want to have this rise of nose because then you end up with this bulldog face, this extreme chin. Uh, the dog de Bordeaux should be in between. It's, it's, it's the standard ask for a concave line, so a, a nose which is slightly higher, higher place than the, the front part of the nose. But it never should be as strong as in the bulldog, so it never should have this real turn up. And there are, there are plenty around which, which have it, which is uh, she shows it nicely, just a bit of a concave line here. Um, and then what she also shows nicely, you can see from the side, is that, uh, that she has more muzzle in front of the nose. So from a distance, you can see this one is on the shot. And uh, this is actually uh, really shows it nicely. She doesn't need to have more length of muzzle before the length of other jaw in front of the nose. Yeah. yeah, sorry, I was busy with her. Uh, can, can you show her the tweet? Can you see that? Dr. Bordeaux should be under shot. Should be under shot. So the way I described it with the bulldog, in terms of up sweep, lay back, it's essentially given in the in the standard, word by word, very detailed. You want also want to have a kind of lay back in the dog de Bordeaux, but not in that uh, extreme ultimate way as in bulldogs. Um, but because you want to have this undershot mouth. And what the standard also says, not in movement, but in the middle, that the underjaw is curved. You want to have a kind of chin mark so that it shows more clearly that we're talking about an undershot face. She does not show that. You can see when, you, when, she is, when the head on profile is shown that there is something there, 
and it's enough in principle. But what we would like to see on FAS is that also by the, the formation of upper lip and under jaw, what's underneath, is that you get a certain line there, a certain expression there, which is typical dog to model. In bulldogs, it's easy to be seen. You don't have to do anything with this upper lip and under lip, it's there. You see a lot of under jaw. Yes, in, in, almost in, in, in a perfect way. And if, if you look, if you describe it, you have a, a wide, uh, reversed U. If you would have that in the dog de Bordeaux, it will be too much. It will give immediately the dog a bulldoggy expression if it becomes a too wide, a U-like form of underjaw. But you need to see underjaw. And in that respect, she shows a V, but she shows a V a bit narrow in front because there's not enough uh, uh, what's it, support of underjaw to uh, with all this upper lip. So this is a combination of a dog de Bordeaux which is undershot, but which you could do with a bit more undershot, and for sure could do with a bit less upper lip to show, and now I come to the ideal form in a dog de Bordeaux, muzzle, seen in our fuss, that is a reversed wide V. So not the U of a bulldog, but a reversed wide V. And she has a reversed small V, narrow V. What I personally uh, don't like at all with this newest standard, the newest French standard about the dog de Bordeaux, is that they have given the breed lesser amount of undershot than originally. And the, the, the standard has changed twice in that respect. And uh, I can understand where it's coming from. They want to prevent the Dog de Bordeaux going direction bulldog. Every time, with two, three standard changes, they have wanted to say, breeders, judges, be careful. We want to keep a sound athletic dog. We don't want to go direction uh, bulldog. It means that they have said, only now that the dog de Bordeaux should be undershot, full stop. The former standard was at least half a centimeter. The standard before was something between half a centimeter and one and a half. And that standard I loved. But it, it, if, if, let's say, the, the people in France say who are the, eh, protecting our breed, be careful, do, don't do this, etc. Okay, but it proves uh, because she now is according to the to, this, to the standard, as she is uh, undershot. But what the, the only restriction which is there is that it should not be a reverse scissor bite. So there should be space between from uh, the, uh, the teeth of upper and under jaw. But she shows perfectly why I uh, regret that this particular change of the standard is there. Of course, she is hardly undershot, but still with quite a bit of space between uh, under jaw and upper jaw. But as you can see, it's not enough to create this V. And, and of course, it also has to do with quite a bit of upper lip. So it's this combination which, which makes it uh, which makes it extra difficult. But yes, 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 please. So as long as, as you, you go for this uh, uh, reversed V expression, uh, I don't, do not mind ex uh, that much how much he's on the shot, that's what I try to say. And I think all judges will, uh, will uh, see it the same. Because this particular depth of stop, this particular eyebrow, combined with this slightly lifted nose and this uh, extra chin mark, in its particular way, which we say Dr. Bodo, that gives this uh, special uh, expression which makes the breed very different from all the other domestic breeds. As you know, the Mastino should not have any chin, should be very deep V. The Mastiff should be square, should not have that much lip. Uh, anyway, just to make it square, but should be a very clean head. So the most details in terms of stop, eyebrow, chin, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, nose placement, puts really the breed aside, the dog that would aside from the other master breeds. And it's the only one who clearly shows with those characteristics 
that it's going direction a bulldog. The other ones are, let's say, real pure mastiffs, nothing of a bulldog, and the dog that is the only one in the group to say, look, I'm going direction that way because I have my lifted nose a bit there and my chin there, I have an extra stop, and I also have those nice eyebrows which are very much a bulldog. There we are. You see what, what uh, amount of upper lip and amount of under jaw are doing. <coughs> Again, you see more or less the same amount of stop and eyebrow. And just because of the chin, she is so much more typical expression, double, just because of this. And that. <laughs> She's much more. Yeah. You can see up on top of her head, you can already see this is much broader as it's there. Let me see the amount. It's quite a bit more. Quite a bit more. Yes. So the uh, it's, it's, it's only a few millimeter, millimeters, but combined with this less depth of upper lip, it gives this more uh, more typical. And so when coming back to this newest standard, if it says undershot only, and that's it, as if there is nothing else, then you might, uh, uh, let's say, uh, invite breeders and judges to say, well, it's only, it's, it's, it's only uh, two or three millimeters, that's okay, and, and then we don't talk about expression anymore. So I can't tell you enough. Uh, a dog de Bordeaux should be more than an undershot, uh, should have more than an undershot uh, muzzle. It should also have a definite chin mark. Not of a bulldog, but uh, quite a bit more than a bull mastiff. But there's a mark, there's, there's probably a mark difference when you have a look at, say, a bull mastiff which is undershot. You can have a Bordeaux with the same undershot, but it's mark turned up. Sorry, you need to speak up as well. Sorry, quite often when we get a which is quite straight teeth will show. Yeah. Yeah. That's an this is a, a this is an essential remark. People who are in bulldogs understand uh, everything he says. Because um, let, let me put it this way, with the newest standard that that the Dr. Bado mouth just has to be undershot. It be, has become even more important that you have this curvy underjaw. Because the only the curvy underjaws with a lot of depth of muzzle, they have the chance to show a nice chin without being under to be undershot too much. And in the case of hey, bulldogs, it's a big problem to get this curvy underjaw. We have plenty which have uh, plenty of underjaw, but it goes together with a flat, not curvy underjaw, and then it means that you just get at the end a bit of curve, and then the mouth comes out, which is all, uh, which also can be a problem in dog but not as often as in bulldogs. No, no comparison. But still, this curvy underjaw in dog is has become even more important. But I still want to say. Look, and let, let me put it uh, mildly, uh, please also study the old standard of the Dr. Bordeaux and take with you that originally he had the, the opportunity to work with Dr. Bordeaux to create this lovely chin with one and a half centimeter of underjaw. And then it was half, and now it's just a bit space. So we, See, we still have a lot of all breeds judges that can't deal with the Dr. Bordeaux's underjaw. Yeah. Um, I've heard judges, they see that it's on the shot, it's like, ooh, yeah. you know, it's too much, they like it almost touching. Yeah. No it, yeah. Because they don't really fully, like them, it's just on the shot, no whereas good. like, like people are trying to get the sweep of chin. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to generalise much more. <laughs> <laughs> but quite often with, with the dog de Bordeaux, when they are undershot, the lower incisors will quite often sit high and yeah. they've got the proper turn. Yeah. Where say in a bull massive which is undershot quite often um, they're not going to sit above the, the upper incisors like that, what we will see in Bordeaux. True. Mm -hmm. True. 
Yeah. Having, having said about her expression, um, I think uh, she is, uh, we, you, we all can see that she is closer to the standard as far as expression is concerned than the black mask which we saw in terms of, I, I say it again, I can uh, repeat it for yourself, uh, uh, depth of, uh, of stop eyebrow, lifted nose, uh, reversed uh, V, wide V, if her nose placement would be a bit higher. So it's according to the standard, but if you just would lift her nose a bit, then it would, you would, it would create a bit more standoffish expression. We talk about small things, we talk about half a centimeter, but it can make all the difference. She's not Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that will not change. That will be, no, her head is broken. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, because uh, uh, now, now you provoke her, but she's, uh, she, it's not, it's, slightly down facing. So and to get up north, to get really up there, yes? That's great, stop and breathe. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any more questions about this, what we have said so far? The, uh, jaws, that is, uh, sorry? Oh, the, sorry, the, the lips. Yes. Okay, okay. Um, well, the, the standard is, is very clear. What she is having is really nice. It's, uh, but as soon as they really hang over, and also that the, the, the under lip shows, like a mastino shoot, and that you look into the mouth, then it's too much. You don't see it a lot with dog but all this, this side profile of the, the curve of the upper lip is, is normally always correct according to the standard. The problem is what's going on here at the upper lip under the nose. There quite a few are too much and then they can have a, a, a lot of under jaw and still they don't show chin. And um, before the, the standard said was there, I said, I said always to myself when judging, no chin, no chance in the world. It's that important to have this, because we end up with a mastiff or a bull mastiff. And so the, the depth here is not, not, not an issue. What the standard asks for, we get. But look more here, please. But, but as it, I will repeat it, it becomes too much. If, it, if you get this houndy look, and then the, the, let's say the lips of a mastino or lips of a bloodhound, and it always goes together with too much underlip, so that it curls around and that you can look into those lips. But it's not that much seen in, in Dr. Waddle. We talk about wrinkles because I mentioned Mastino, so we better go for that. Um, I already made it clear, we want to see more wrinkles in a Dr. Waddle than a bull mastiff. And the, the, the standard is quite clear what is, what is wanted. One particular wrinkle is not mentioned in the standard, despite the fact that many dog de Bordeaux, also the most beautiful examples of the breed, uh, high quality champion stock, have this particular wrinkle. She's having a bit. And that's the wrinkle which starts above the eye and then continues down under. So what, uh, what cannot be wrong, according to any breeder or judge, is that we want to have plenty of wrinkle here. And, and the more we have here in terms of uh, accents to create this eyebrow, the better. Also plenty of wrinkle here. And this, the latest standard says uh, that the, the wrinkles should be mobile. So we want to have wrinkles all the time, also when the head is reposed, but not like in a Charpey or in a Bloodhound or in a Bastido, that they are there and what, what Riquelle says, dead wrinkles. Um, the latest um, uh, development in the breed is, is that this particular wrinkle <coughs> becomes more and more accentuated. And uh, it goes together with plenty of wrinkles on the forehead, but it, it gives this, uh, which is an essential characteristic in the, the new quality mastiff. We also like to see the mastiff, according to 
the school to which I belong, but it's not in the standard. Um, and it for sure is a quality of hounds, of scent hounds, number one, the blood hound, <coughs> and we do not want to have it in a dog the Because whatever happens in its face of lovely qualities, stop, eyebrow, lifted nose, chin, as soon as you have too much wrinkle here, you get a big red hand <coughs> which you would like to embrace. It gives the breed a sad look. It often goes together with an open eye, and again, a melancholic expression. Is, and as soon as you see that in Dr. Bono, you should say to yourself, something is wrong here. If I want to embrace a Dr. Bono because of this lovely red orangutan, whatever face, and this big red teddy bear, something is wrong. And often, this, uh, this wrinkle, which he doesn't have, it's only slightly there, that is wrong. It gives the breed a melancholic expression. It's a new development, a Napolitano characteristic, which we should not have. Um, <coughs> it means this, this melancholic expression is something totally different as the standoff expression you want to have in uh, Dr. Bordeaux. And again, which the bulldog should have in its most ideal form. It's stand off, it's even in the standard. And a dog de Bordeaux is, is using this particular category. If you want to go to use it, it's still just there. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Exactly. Repeat it, please. Loud. Dissuasive. Exactly. And all those characteristics I mentioned, again, stop, eyebrow, lift the nose, the chin, that gives that particular stand offish look. And what did you know? How was it called? Dissuasive. Dissuasive. And that makes Dr. Bono. And as soon as you bring on too much wrinkle, especially this one, then it's gone. So it's very important. <laughs> what about eye placement? You will see the chin there, the nose, and behind there, deep behind there, you will see the eyes. So if you look on a Dr. Bodo head from whatever distance, and you see eyes, and you see a nose here, then it's wrong. So it's extremely important you have this concave line, you have this chin and upturned muscle. Not as in a bulldog, it's too much, but you should have it. And in, in, a, in a bull mastiff, that, that already shows how, how it works with going direction bulldog, the bull mastiff you can have uh, uh, one which shows a, a bit of a lifted nose. We don't mind too much, it doesn't hurt too much because we want to have this bully expression. The other way around, we don't mind too much if a, uh, if a muscle is a slightly down faced and massive. I'm, I'm personally quite critical about it, but it doesn't hurt that much as if it, when a dog that Bordeaux is down faced, because you want to have that essential lifted nose. And here you, you don't want to have it, so it's going a bit down faced, and it's going, let's say you have a half a centimeter of a problem, and in the dog de Bordeaux you have a, a one and a half centimeter of a problem. You know what I mean? So it's, uh, and I, I hope I make clear that I don't want to have down face masks, cool masks. But what she's judging, sorry, how much emphasis do you put on the head when you're judging? A lot. A lot. Yeah. Like, like more than structure? No. Okay, no. No, but I'm going to give you a, a lovely role. Uh, I'm going, because I'm a city all around her, you judge more than the research yes, group. Yeah. So I'm going to give you the, air, the aura of an old-fashioned around him, which we all love, kind of around in England, from before the war. That's the role you're going to play. Oh, not quite that old. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and that's why for the, the next 40 years you're still judging, I'm going to give you that okay. role. Okay. Okay. Yes? Okay. Yeah, if people want to go for a break, yes? Do have a quick break? Or? Sure. Stretch legs, well, that's like this cake? Uh, okay. Impressive thing. But wrong for Dr. Bordeaux development. Uh, so perhaps we, uh, we leave what, what we said about the head. Can we leave the head? Any more questions about the head? Yes, please. I might be wrong or not, but the type of head, like the amount of wrinkles and stuff, how much does that vary to a judge? 
with our face. Like you have seen how the Bordeaux faces, I've never seen a dog with so many different facial expressions to a Bordeaux. Mm -hmm. uh, some have got a lot of wrinkles, some have got few wrinkles. Does that make much of a difference in your judgment? Yes. Because uh, what, we, what we talked about so far, and in fact that counts for every quality of the standard, every quality of the breed, we talk about it and we say, well, this is the way it should be ideally. This is what the standard says ideally. But then, for instance, you get a, a, a dog which has too much wrinkles with a most beautiful face in terms of eyebrow, lift, chin. <coughs> so, wow. And you have to um, make a decision between a dog and a dog which is better in terms of amount, but which lacks uh, chin and which is slightly down-faced. I already can tell you that I will put up the dog with too much wrinkle if all the other qualities are similar. So it's all about comparing the whole time. And that makes judging interesting, makes it frustrating, whatever. Um, but what we said about the amount of wrinkles, we would not, the, the way we talk about it now is different from the way we talked in the past, the way I talked about it in the past. So I have to bring a message, I have to become myself, and it counts for all judges, become more strict on the amount of wrinkles because it has proven to be that judges, or that breeders are able to create more and more wrinkles. And we talk about a breed in which wrinkles are an essential quality, a feature of the breed. But in so many breeds, it's the problem of the more, the better. And I praise the French. I don't like it because I have to say no to dogs which are beautiful otherwise. But I have to praise the French in this respect that they say, let's try to stop it before it's too late, as is proven in many breeds. And now we can stop it. To give you another idea, in the end, it's, it's what I've written for, for the English Dog World paper. Uh, until very recently, we were constantly selecting uh, Dog de Bordeaux to go away from the Bull Mastiff and Mastiff look. So we, all the time, we wanted to have more bone, more substance, a more bulky front, and more wrinkles and more chin. And then it proves to be possible to get more and more skin, and then did you end up with a wrong expression. Because what is very clear, already the first lines of the standard, this particular standoffish look, and if you get all those wrinkles, and you want to embrace it, what many people want to do when they see those beautiful, overdone, modern dog de Bordeaux, then something is definitely wrong. And then, and so you, and that's what you see happening not only in dog de Bordeaux, but you also see happening in in bull mastiffs, you see happening in mastiffs, they all become more and more like Mastin Napolitano. They become more heavy, more loose skin, and any breeder who is working with breeds with loose skin can tell you, as soon as you bring loose skin and loose skin together, you get more loose skin. So for breeders, this message should be translated, let's go <coughs> now and then for a dry dog de bordeaux which is in fact doesn't have enough wrinkles. Otherwise, the amount of wrinkles gets more and more. Chapey, good example. Chao Chao, good example. But those breeds are perfect examples of how things can change for the better. If you look at Chao Chao's of nowadays compared to 50 years ago, Chapey, same story. We had very impressive dog, far too much wrinkle. And in no time, we managed to get them more modern, more less overdone, by using dogs which don't have the right amount of wrinkles. And that's the only way to get out of here. And so now and then, use a dry dog. Would you say, well, you should, should have more wrinkle, but I need it because loose and loose becomes too much loose. Right? What about the eye color? Good question. Um, standard is very clear. It's a big problem because you have those light colored uh, dogs with the red masks. By the way, talking about masks, um, so you see we, we keep on talking about heads. Um, in the original standard, standard, there were two different masks only. A uh, red mask, this one is, this is not a red mask, according to the new standard, but originally we had the red mask and the black mask. 
And nowadays we uh, have a difference between three masks. A red mask, which I have not seen here today, it's a rare color. Uh, the black mask, which I have seen in purple examples today, we'll talk about it later. And no mask, this is no mask. No mask means that there is hardly or no difference between the face color and the rest of the body. If you have a red mask, you have, like this one, no black pigmentation uh, of, of nose, of eyes or whatever, eyes and eye rims, but you have a slightly reddisher, more brownish color compared to the rest of the body. To make it clear that there are three different kinds. So this is no mask. Originally we said uh, a red mask and almost all people will still, will say, will still say this is a red mask. The black mask, she is a perfect example, is totally different in quality as the black mask you want in a bull mastiff or a mastiff. The mastiff and bull mastiff again is different, but um, plenty of people who say black mask, they might criticize this dog de Bordeaux for having not enough mask. If they do so, they prove to not have that much knowledge yet about the breed. It should have hardly any black. I always say, just put this head in a toaster <laughs> for two minutes, number five or six, not more, and then get it out and you get a beautiful, toasted, just a bit of black here, a bit of black around the eye, but as soon as it becomes black, like in a boxer or in a bull mastiff, or in a mastiff, then it's too much. And if there are a few of those around, but they seldom have, I dare to say, I've never seen a, a dog de Bordeaux with a real deep black mask with, of the proper type. They always wear full masks. So it's not to say they can't have no. more masks. No, they can. It's an overlay yeah. color yeah. than a deep full yeah. color. Yeah, exactly. Right. But you, you don't get the, you just don't get the type. Um, I've got an Isabella at home and he's got the real red, pinky red mask. Yes, yes. So he's a rescue dog, so yeah. But he's still beautiful and he's got the real deep yeah. red nose. Yeah. So that, that's a good example, if I understand you correctly, of a red mask. Mm. Right. Um, I want to, because um, I, I personally I'm, I'm quite keen on, on black mask Dr. Bordeaux, for two reasons. Mm. And I, I came up with this, uh, what, yeah? Sorry, black masks, how important are they in regards to keeping them? I tell you. They're not. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> They're not. Um, but... The black mask dog de Bordeaux is of essential value to the breed. It is, for other reasons, which I'm going to tell you now. Two reasons, if I, and if I, if I talk about value for the breed often, don't get me wrong, there are, you, have, you come, up, come up with examples which prove to be uh, the contradiction of what I say, but often they are more athletic, more stronger built, better put together than uh, many of the red dog de Bordeaux, red mask dog. So that's something I would like to pay uh, ask attention for. Secondly, there are particular strains, it's only one or two, which are still, uh, they still keep it going in, in uh, continental Europe, um, which are of the most beautiful type, of a, of a head quality, which is uh, uh, even almost impossible to get in a red mask of the bottom. So that's another reason to uh, be very careful with this color. And I say it because it proves to be that people who are in Dog de Bordeaux don't want to have to do anything with, bull, with this uh, black mask, but they say, of course they say, well, it, it's bull mastiff. And when they have a litter with black mask puppies, it's almost impossible to sell them because people want to have this red face. Yeah, but if you have seen a black mask Bordeaux of the quality I am talking about, you want to breed black masks. That's how good they are. And in, 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 uh, in Belgium, a, a dog has been bred uh, a couple of years ago. He's still winning. Uh, everywhere where he comes, he's winning. And he, is, he luckily has proved to be a real ambassador for the black mask. So whatever me and other judges could have said in the past, 
doesn't matter. People just will keep on going with breeding red mass. But this, this dog changed the whole scenery. So he's used now and people appreciate him. And uh, to, to prove how right I am uh, with this particular dog, what I say about black mast, he has won a couple of best in shows already at uh, championship show level. And he has, uh, um, a few times, he has become best head in show. And so bring in a good dog and you don't have to talk anymore. That's a, a good example. Um, but uh, come back to pigmentation, it is of no influence whatsoever. And to come back to eye color, it's extremely difficult. And uh, the standard asks for an, uh, an, uh, a brown, what is it, hazel or brown color, as dark as possible. In a black mask, though, it's not more difficult than a red mask, so often you have to make a remark, would prefer a dark <coughs> color of eye. Um, Having said that, there are plenty of um, good colored dog de Bordeaux around, but of course they never seldom have this brown color you will see in a, in a red mass dog. You see them in the best black mass dog, a dark hazelnut. But if you have pen, plenty of in, uh, in depth of color in a red mask, it often is, where are we? This color is already very, very nice. He, the, and, uh, to give you a guideline, because it's uh, difficult to say how dark is or what is not the light, she, this color is slightly darker than her color of coat, her color of face, and then it's fine. It also means that you have uh, a dog with uh, a lighter color, uh, her color of eye is allowed to be even lighter than this particular eye, it's just a matter of comparison. Excuse me? <laughs> exactly. So if you say, um, <coughs> does it hurt me, yeah. then, then it's fine. But the guideline is at least a bit darker than the color of coat. And of course, the darker the better. And it, gives, uh, it also means that people nowadays go for the more, uh, the deeper red, uh, the, the redder the better. Uh, that means that you have to <coughs> ask even more of, of eye color. And often in those deep red dogs, you have to make a remark about eye color. Because compared to this deep red color, they often too light. <coughs> okay. Enough about the head. Uh, bodies. Well, the, the black mask was, as far as I'm concerned, such a perfect example of what the dog de Bordeaux front should be that I'm more or less finished with that. I thought it was a, a real good example. But perhaps we should get her back for a sec. <laughs> that if you have another good look at it, and if there is a, a question about it, then we can keep on going for the Because otherwise, I also I took her out and picked her out immediately, because the balance, etc., is the most typical of what I've seen here today. thing we have not mentioned yet, I just will keep on going and you it will interrupt. Um, the Bumestiv standard asked for a cat food. The Dog de Bordeaux standard doesn't. And it has everything to do with the quality of front. It's almost impossible to have this deep, wide, massive front, bulky shoulder, and then a cat food. It, it would look silly. It's only, you only can have it in, the, in, the, in such a clean cut, normal, and there's plenty of width there, but still normal front, which the bull master should have. Uh, but you do, you do want to have a strong feet, and there's clearly a difference between the, the so it should go direction uh, cat foot, but you don't go for a cat foot per de uh, by definition. Um, <laughs> So the, the, I, will, I will repeat it because it's such a, an important... Um, yeah, any, anything you see here from, from top to, to bottom, it's, 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 it shouts Dog de Bordeaux type. And if I don't have this on a Dog de Bordeaux, then um, hardly any chance. I don't want to say like with the face, no chin, no chance, but it, it, they really should have this front. 
And if they don't, so if they go, if it becomes wide, but a bit showing too much uh, daylight, uh, and, and certainly when you don't have this bulky upper arm, then yeah, then it's just not dope at all. Then it's then it's too much for master. The other way around, I, I think that the judges who are really uh, uh, to be called specialists of Dr. Bordeaux and Bullmastiff <coughs> will not accept a Dr. Bordeaux front in a Bullmastiff. So personally, I am extremely critical on too much upper arm of a Bullmastiff. I, I, I can't stand it because it's a Dr. Bordeaux quality. And the standard is so clear about what the, the front of a Bullmastiff should be. The same counts for the Dr. Bordeaux, it's so clear. So. And here we talk about the main differences in body, with the depth of body, the front and the depth of body, which puts the dog below the side. So what's the difference in A lot. A lot. <coughs> we're gonna show. We're gonna. Uh, we're gonna show. We are perhaps we're good. Because that has everything to do with this particular uh, balance, depth, uh, and width, and whatever it is. So they have to be different. This both standards are asking for a totally different movement. So if let, let's do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I want to have to do that first. The Okay. We all have seen that she is not completely sound, but it has nothing to do with her typical gait. <coughs> I will. I will talk. I will talk about it later. Let's let's keep the dog around. Okay, great. They both show uh, on, on the move. They prove to be uh, highly typical representatives of, of the breed. We talk. Hopefully, you will come up with it yourself. Otherwise, give the bulldog around. It proves to be that the Dr. Bordeaux is something between a bull mastiff and a Dr. Bordeaux. I will ask you, what is the main, what have you seen as the main difference in movement between the bull mastiff and the Dr. Bordeaux? Yes? I like that, but I prefer that. Head carriage. Exactly. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I, 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 I would like to say, should Evan judge who <laughs> ask for its head up in there? But of course, I can't do it because yeah. we have only a few judges left. Yeah. But it's, it's essential what this um, small bit was showing. That's so typical of Dr. Bill. Yeah. And it's just that it follows from all what we have said about balance, about mm -hmm. her construction, her depth, or front, whatever. And so she has to come down. And as soon as you want to have this head up, as the Bullmaster showed, that's typical for a Bullmaster, beautiful top line, straight, that's very much Bullmaster. It belongs to a normal, but substantial, but still, substantial, but still normal in the dog. And that's going away from that balance. That, that's why she has to drop back. And she has to slope in the head as, as if she's overbuilt. Yes, You're a Tuesday. <laughs> And what you should, what was, uh, yes, please ask. How much rise is acceptable on the top line? How much rise? Yeah. This? Maybe when standing or moving? Standing. 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 Um, this to me is acceptable, no problem. Because it, it is so difficult to get, uh, in Boomestis it's already not easy. But in Boomestis it proves to be much, uh, much more possible to get straight back to the loins. Bull masters, you often have to criticize on too low a tail set, but um, the majority of dogs with all you have to criticize, not so much of being overbuilt, but uh, of too much rise over the lawn combined with too low a tail set. In other words, a throw back to the wall, this roach back. So this kind of top line, which doesn't show <coughs> any 
any idea of the road's back. And with a decent tail set, could be a bit higher, as we would prefer a slightly higher tail set. For the breed, this is already so good, so much what you look for, that I don't mind too much that you slightly overdo it. If, if, I, if, if to come back to our top line, um, what I also like to see is and that's again very much a double below quality is that the widths, uh, because of this extra quality of muscles which is everywhere, it gives them uh, more pronounced widths than, let's say, the more massive. Um, and if I would criticize the top line uh, a bit, then it would be about the weakness here. But she shows a bit more weakness there because of this extra bone in the front. Uh, but, uh, so I wouldn't criticize her top line too much. And I would praise her, I will say it again, I would praise her uh, loins and tail set. Because in that respect she stands out and is much better than the average dog in whatever country. Um, another thing with the a bit different between the, the, the bulldog, you, perhaps you have, you, you know, uh, I, I hope you know anyway, with this bulldog is that it, when it moves that you have this straight front movement, it should not come any closer, and when you look in front or back that you can see the, those hind legs, of course if you get that impression in a dog, <coughs> it's too much, because it's really, eh? so the, the standard asks for, even, that the front legs are coming a bit closer together as soon as it really starts moving on and on. So if, if a bulldog will come here, then I'm sure his, its front is too loose and will also be too bulky here because of all these extra muscles to correct this front. So I'm not asking for a, a bulky front from top to bottom, I'm only asking for a bulky front here on this upper arm. And to come back to the uh, uh, shoulder conformation, and so we talked about this main difference of this upper arm, which is curved with the, uh, with the bulldog. The bulldog uh, upper arm is nothing, is, is, doesn't, sorry? The bulldog front is uh, not doing anything more than just following a well-developed ribcage. With the bulldog, it's following a, a barrel-shaped ribcage plus this upper arm. Uh, but that there is a bit of looseness allowed is clearly in the standard, and again different from the bull mastiff, that it says uh, the elbow should not be too far away, not too close by. So there is a bit of space there because of all these extra muscles, which put it a bit aside, but should not be a curved upper arm and should not be a loose shoulder. Uh, so if you stand up one. So she is relatively clean. here on. But the extra muscles you will find here. But she's just for, so this is what you want. Clean, which means 
uh, and it's a nice conformation, a nice balance between shoulder and upper arm. And because of his deep round ribs, which the upper arm is just following, she needs this extra muscles to keep it together. And this way, had this just this elbow, which is slightly out, it's perfect. And just a, let's say one finger I can have there. And as soon as you get the, the get them higher on the leg and you get them more narrow, the elbows come there. And if you lose your four chest, you lose everything. Yeah. Question. But, and I, I like to think, the, the problem is not there yet, that judges have to be corrected by another uh, dictate from France that we're going too far. And it, because the, what the problem is, uh, so then we're going to talk about this new hypertype, that we see uh, Dog de Bordeaux of more impressive size than, for instance, than, than she shows, and she's a perfect size. More bone, yes. But we see it in a way uh, as if it is a mastiff or a mastino. So not with this uh, balance of a bit deeper body and uh, a bit lower on the leg. And often they they don't have this this front at all. But they show to be very impressive because they have a lot of bone and they have a lot of width, but in a mastiff way, in a mastino. And if you look the from the arm profile, they show hardly any athletic ability anymore. Or in other words, they show hardly any tuck up anymore. It's just a straight underline. So you've got a lot of impressive red bone and substance. But it's not an athlete anymore. And this I still call an athlete. Because from whatever angle I look, I see this bulldoggy shape. I see this uh, tuck up. I see plenty of quality a strength in, in front, and I see this uh, uh, still lighter uh, loin, still lighter hindquarters, and in, in those very impressive dogs, it becomes only substance and bone and nothing else. It's just straight lines. So a dog that don't should be should have shape, and the bull mastiff is not allowed to have shape. It should be clean cut, but in the other, the direction the dog that is going, if you're not careful. You have uh, plenty of substance without the shape. And the first thing is, look at the fronts. You see, if you're impressed by bone only, and wrinkles only, and you still don't think, oh, this, you still think it's beautiful, and go look aside and you see this straight <coughs> line, say, this is very wrong. And if you still are in doubt and still say, oh, oh this is nice, go for the quality of muscle. Because in this particular type, you see a lot of width of muzzle, which is not typical in the breed. In bull mastiffs, it's very difficult, in the mastiffs and the mastino, to get plenty of width in the muzzle. Or often you have to, do, to say, would like to see more, eh? would prefer more work on the eye. 
and Dr. Godot is essentially the standard, should not be too flashy under the eye. In other words, many of the modern Dr. Godot are too much here, and then they are full and straight, but they should, in fact, you should criticize them if you are very much a master breed. I would like to see a bit more here. That's very much Dr. Godot. And still you want to have this strong foreface with plenty of width there, plenty of jaw, but not all this flesh. And what you see with this modern breed, this modern uh, Dr. Godot, is that you see a very full muscle, plenty of width there, wrinkles everywhere. So you look into a face, a, a muscle, and you don't see anything anymore. And what we said earlier, you want to see the stop, the eyebrow, the lifted nose, the chin, and not this just hump of red meat. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, just to make the, the message clear. Eh? And it always will go together with smaller teeth. And in that respect, the, the French have been, Triquet has been so, so clever because he came up with a, a very short list of things. Judges, please be careful. And he was talking about teeth more than anything else. And what is the, and, and, and since then, of course, you're going to you check and compare and see if he's right. But if you go for the right amount of teeth, and you go for real strong, not only the canines, but also those strong inc incisors, right? Incisors, how yeah. If you go for strength there, which is not easy in a short muscle breed, as we all know, masses, blue masses, but if you go for strength there, and in Dr. Bordeaux, you still can find it, it uh, almost always goes together. It's almost like a law, <coughs> natural law, that you will then, if you have those strong incisors, you have also this nice strength of underjaw without becoming too much too fresh. So it's, it's just try to check and try to see, but uh, there is a great message there. But, uh, I was not too long ago, I was judging the championship club show in Poland, and they were quite uh, first impression, uh, very athletic dogs. Hard muscled, clean cut. Often you had to say, well, a bit more mastiffy. So they didn't write it down as such, but still you'd like to see a bit more everything. But head wise, they all had plenty of underjaw, plenty of chin, lifted nose, very standoffish expression, enormous size of teeth, and all hardly anyone there. So I would say plenty of judges would have made a mistake, would like to see more work under the eye, as if they were judging Mastino, Mastiffs, or Bull Mastiffs. Not with those. And this, this particular quality, this work under the eye, is uh, you really have to, if you are more than only double below, it's a uh, quality you have to say to yourself, no, it's not wanted, because it's almost natural in this square face to go for it. As I also had to say to myself often in the past, no, it's not massive, no, it's not more massive. I want to see space here. Any go with that? Explaining it to a judge as well that with the youngsters, you can see a youngster that um, even a, a male, even up to 9, 10, 13 months of age, um, not even have any near his potential at that age. But we can only judge what we presented yeah. on the day. And that, that makes it hard to understand yeah. for a lot of judges that don't know the breed that some of those dogs that don't look very good at those ages can turn out to be so stunning later on. And and some of those dogs that don't look very good at those ages can turn out to be so stunning later on and, and meet a lot of what they have to do. Yes, but then the, the judge's yeah. answer is, bring it back to me when you yeah. 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 because we're judging on the day. Yeah, I mean, I know ourselves and talking to other breeders as well, young males going in and um, not like them because it, one thing before I brought is that with the males we find a lot of them come leggy and a lot of them, because a lot of other breeds don't go through the uglies like what ours do. But to what what is even uh, what makes it, it all more complicated is that that that's in this particular new hybrid type we were talking about, they often show to be beautiful very impressive already from one year on. And I've made a mistake myself once to give that particular mistake, then before knowing that whatever. 
uh, that I was really tempted and I've given him the ticket as an 11 months old dog, or young dog. Very impressive, finished picture. Luckily it wasn't a remark there well. Should not go any further. And, but it was the first and last ticket I gave him because he was so nice and so impressive but he was already a finished picture. And this particular extra massive impressive dog, they are finished there but at three years you can bring them away or you have to bring them away there. So, it's, but it's, that's perhaps the most difficult thing when judging method as far as I'm concerned is that you have to judge on the day so you make that decision but you know that in two years time you have to correct yourself because the dog is gone. But for breeders or for just exhibitors or for people around they see this young massive dog with a finished picture and they see it winning. But I, I, it's very I difficult. Eh? I, I understand that. Yeah, and that, that's the way it goes. So it's so, and it, but I, I, so far it's so proved to be so difficult to say, well, uh, I know in two years' time you will go wrong. I will hit with, with held the first prize to him today. Perhaps now, with all the extra information we have about this hypertype, beautiful, lack of uh, the real typical frogs, the straight underline. You have more reasons already now to say very impressive, but it's not according to the standard. But that's, that will help. So at what age should they be doing the tools? Should they be doing the tools? The best one, three years at least, but, but when it counts, that's a, a familiar remark for all our uh, members. But as long, also a young dog de Bordeaux will have shape and will impress in, in hand, will be strong in bone. So this is what I've said so far is not uh, to, uh, to, uh, to be an advocate of uh, light bone, uh, no substance, uh, no shape. So <coughs> a younger dog like, she, how old is she again? Five. Five, and the other one? Fifty months. Well, the fifty months shows in every aspect already to be a typical dog, but in a different way than she is. But she has as much shape, but she is showing it in a nice way because she gives a finished picture. But she, I'm sure that her balance and, and proportions are more or less the same as she. Exactly in between, but I, I don't think there is that much difference between the width between the widths. There, that's not the essential difference. The essential difference between the bulldog and the dog de Bordeaux and the bull mastiff is that the bulldog should have bare ribs and should have this upper arm standing, this curved upper arm standing apart, standing aside of the body. Those that two barrel barrel shape and curved upper arm. That dictates bulldog. And the rolling gait is there because of this extra broad, deep front and those small hindquarters. But the, 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 how to say it, the lack of balance between the two, that makes the bulldog roll. If you're looking for the top of the shoulder, it's quite a. Of course, yeah. So if we look at the bull not so much distance, it's a different construction. Yeah. So you're going to sort of say that in between the two is the name of the Yeah. It's a wider yeah. construction. Yeah. Yeah. But um, what I try to say is that, that focusing on the shoulder blades, only the width between, is dangerous. Because in a dog de Bordeaux and in the bull mastiff and even in the Bulldog, the width between the shoulders can be too much and is the first symptom of a loose front. So, in other words, uh, of course, the width between the shoulders of a bull mastiff is less than a dog below because you want to have more ribs. And, and 
actually put on the piece of this barrel shape rig. But the, what is more important is what we have said about the cleanliness of front, upper arm, and upper arm. And uh, in itself, in, in the breed itself, it's, um, you will notice differences between width in the shoulder. And it's always a, uh, it says something about how, uh, how, come, how well put together the shoulder conformation is. And often it is, uh, if you have those elbows out, it often is already up there, but because there's too much width between the shoulder plates. So in itself you're right, but I would prefer, please focus on a bit lower. That's where the, the main difference is between the different units. How much do you find to be like a disqualifying fault is like the white patch like on the chest and feet, legs and that? Yeah. Again, a big difference between Bullmastiff and Dr. Bordeaux. In Bullmastiff, much less is, in, is allowed than in Dr. Bordeaux. The standard is quite clear. What she is having is uh, hardly any. What the, the average breed is, uh, average dog in the breed is showing. But even allowed, it's even allowed to have some white on the and some judges would not mind about a slight white tip on the tail. But this, uh, according to what the, the feet and the uh, chest is about, uh, having said that, the, the white is still a problem, much more than in, in, in Bullmasters. So the, the French, Madame uh, Dupuisky, not too long ago, uh, tried to correct us all to say, oh, be careful. And as soon as the white gets up here in one unbroken line, then it's too much. So it should be a patch, and it might be quite a big patch, but it should not go out. But you will come across, uh, certainly in, in certain lines of Dr. Wadol in the litter, which even have a white lace. And that can disappear, depending on how much it is. But it, so that uh, piebald fact factor is very much there. And of course we have, the reason why it's still there is because rather recently Bulldog has been used, St. Bernard has been used, so there are throwbacks to it. But what counts for wrinkles, the more you bring yeah, dogs together with wrinkles, counts also for white. If you bring whites together, you can end up with white uh, dog Bulldog. Yeah. So be, be careful. <coughs> and it's not for nothing that France had to say, judges, be careful. Personally, I hated to be too critical on it. I was not. Uh, two years ago, I judged in, in France for the last time, or for less than one and a half years ago. And uh, the was deep south in France, so only French exhibitors. Uh, proved to be that the quality outside France is much better, as we already knew, but now, on this particular day, I had, uh, had a record ending one of 40. Uh, but still, difficult to find a, a good one. The one I owned, there was one bitch only I liked, which came there to, to get her. In France, you, you need to come to the show to get your uh, pedigree, so it had to be confirmed. But she had an enormous white patch all the way going here. I still made her best bitch. I didn't want to provoke the French more by going for best of breed. But she was my best of breed, but I thought, well, let's not uh, go too far. But I just cannot uh, go for color only. And I think it's, uh, in that respect, I belong to the English school. Uh, a good dog cannot have a bad color, but still, we have to be careful. But uh, I, on that day, she was so much better than anything else, and I said, well, it's only color. Coming back to the all Um what we, uh, that, that's, uh, that's something I know now we can start preaching. Uh, five years ago I wouldn't talk like this, but I, I like to think that it's really necessary to, to, to say, please, all around us, uh, help us with be, being strict on confirmation and movement. Uh, often I have the impression that you have listened to the specialists for breeders so good, so well, 
that you accept things in our breeds more than you would accept in other breeds. And so you listen so good about it's so difficult to get a mastiff of the right size and the right proportions and that lovely head. And so we have to, and it's so, so difficult to get them right and to get them right on the move. But in the last couple of years, we have seemed to get more and more massive dogs. Our mastiffs get bigger and bigger. Uh, our mastinos get more and more. Our dog de get more and more. And our bull mastiffs get more and more. And we accept things which we, I think the old fashioned orientals, let's say before the war, would not accept. And I think if you would go for this strict interpretation of construction, balance, soundness, movement, then it will help us to stay focused on what the true interpretation of the standard is. And in that respect, um, I do not mind if you would end up with a dog with a bit more mastiff look, we could, could do a bit more shaping, but if it's a sound, strong, athletic dog, as long as you don't put up those impressive, massive, bold, wrinkly dogs, which are still nicely balanced, but which don't have the shape of a dog of bottle. And, 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 and mastiffs, and the, the standard asks so much, it's so clear, there's no minimum and maximum size. The standard asks so much for uh, the bigger the better, if sound. So not the biggest and still pretty sound for his size, that's not what the standard asks for, and the breed is simply possible to get more and more. Also over here, and but it counts all over the world, you, you, it's easy to find nowadays masters of 100, 120 kilos. Easy. And, 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 and they look very nice when they're one or two years old, but you already know, in, in a year of time they're gone. And it's the same story, and that you put up those young dogs, you have to put them up, and you go from, from worse to worse. So, be strict, and I don't, I don't mean to say, well, be extra, um, for instance, I have also said, be careful with the stop line, this is really good, and so don't, be, uh, don't become too critical about that, uh, but accept normal functional things. That, that's, uh, I have sometimes the impression, that, that all, also all over the world, that uh, all rounders have listened too much to <coughs> specialists to say, well, accept it, those are the ones to win. No, um, more straight. Yeah. Probably a reason I bought this bitch is because she shows that slight turnout. But something that a lot of breeders used to say with this breed is they're allowed to be east west. No. And they're not. No. So I guess that's sort of we're demonstrating that. Please speak up. Okay. Um, something that breeders used to say with this breed is they're allowed to be east west and they're not. like. The degree that she turns out is slight, which is what the standard reads to. So they can be straight or that slight, but not. <laughs> no, east west is weakness. Full stop. There's a loose shoulder conformation. It's overdone, weak, no, no good. It just, yeah, it was a common thing that yeah. readers used to push that yeah. that was acceptable. Yeah. And what about the correct amount of. Um, Rear angulation. Um, in some breed standards, there are actually um, angles listed, yeah. Yeah. but for for our breed, there isn't. No. And I know that um, um, that yeah, rear rear angulation could be a bit of a confusing one. Yeah. Um, so is there a, a, a perfect? First, track? first and for all, um, that, that but it counts for all master breeds. You're not allowed to say anything about the angulation in the hindquarters before you have seen the dog moving. Because when it starts moving, then it will show the exact amount of angulation. Meaning that the legs, hind legs, front legs, are used to support the weight. And that's the, the elephant story. Enormous weight, straight legs. And I don't want to say that we're, we're not going for, uh, we're not going back to straight, yeah, but it's just uh, it's to straight uh, fronted or straight uh, uh, masters with straight hindquarters. But what I do say is that first and for all, when a, a dog or whatever master breed is standing, it's supporting its weight. And all standards of mastiffs ask for moderate angulation. 
even the bull mastiff, which is the most athletic of all mastiff breeds we have, clearly ask for moderate angulation, a normal bend of stifle, a clear definition of hock, nothing more, nothing less. And in many mastiff breeds, and that's part of the problem why the breed is in a, the breeds are on an, in a new way unsound and easily uh, over the top and easily old, is they have a majority of them has too much angulation. As there are quite a few dogs over there which have too much angulation. Quite a few mastiffs and certainly Mastin Napolitano with too much angulation. And they're gone. They can't support the weight. It, it, it's gone in three years' time. And uh, again, you will be surprised in the best Mastiff, the best Dog de Bordeaux, the best Mastino, that the dog there with moderate angulation, you could say, well, we would like, we'll like to see a bit more. And when it starts moving, the most beautiful movements are there to be seen by dogs which are moderate angulated. Oh. <coughs> Thank you very much. I, I come back to, to Bull Mastiff, because that's, that's, that's very fresh in, in uh, the, the, the Bull Mastiff is, is a perfect example of that, you have, that we have been able to create plenty of dogs with plenty of angulation behind, but with straight fronts. So they do all kinds of awkward things to correct this imbalance. So I prefer to have a Bull Mastiff with modern angulation behind, and, and in balance with moderate angulation in front, because then, it, then there is a normal length of stride and there is a normal drive, then the legs can just do whatever they want to do because there is balance. And not to criticize bull masters uh, here this weekend, because last weekend, because your bull masters are really, really good, top of the world, seriously, but a lot of them had far too low a tail set, plenty of angulation in the arm. And if you just saw what those dogs were doing, just to get around <coughs> this, this strange uh, low tail set, it was, as I've not seen it in many countries. So you have, uh, and of course, every county had a certain moment has a, a certain problem, but it was just awkward to see. And then, to come back to, uh, of course, I made a remark then, uh, please watch your tail sets. And if I would have all messes with this tail set, I only had one or two in the end, which I could which will also luckily my win is. But um, then I also would say, if you talk about balance, please watch those fronts. Ha there were only, again, my winners who had a proper width, clean, wide, strong front. And so there's hardly any, anything there that gives a, a nice picture, but that's about it. But, but fronts, as, as you know, is, is, a, is a big problem in, in many breeds, and the over-angulation in me and up is a big problem in many breeds. But it also is a problem in the world. So, uh, come, but coming back to construction, uh, it's, uh, and let's say again, uh, about France, we, luckily we've been judging there a few times, and it's not that long ago that we, uh, that the judges were told, let's watch construction now, let's watch movement. So it's only uh, 15 years ago that the breed was still in that, uh, uh, what to say, there were not many around, and we had just to, uh, to struggle with time to get uh, everything right, and to get Dog de Bordeaux in time. Uh, but at a certain moment, there were so many, and so good, that we said, now we're gonna watch construction every moment. And the main thing, which, which is the main difficulty in Dog de Bordeaux, and which is different to all the other mm -hmm. master breeds, is this rise over the loin combined with this low tail set this roach back that is still very much a dog and problem. And there, I want to have uh, extra attention of, of the around us to, uh, to stay very strict on that. But would you not say with the border having more front angulation than the mastiff, that for there to be balance, they need more rear angulation than the mastiff? Then, no. then. Because in, in, in general, I don't think, the, the, as a breed, they have more angulation than the bull mastiff, but still there are plenty of dog de Bordeaux to which you have to say, who would like to see more forechest? The upper arm is too short. Uh, not enough uh, layback of shoulder. Uh, and, um, and at the same time, 
So what I see happening is that they, uh, this, this whole... So you're saying the embryos don't match the cards? Exactly. So that we have we have managed to improve uh, the dog in terms of more regulation of the DNA so much that I uh, often have to criticize it. And, and, and the, 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 it's, I would say it's more important to focus on that aspect because if you talk to newcomers, if you, uh, as, a, as a judge, put up a dog with moderate angulation when standing, they just say, well, yeah, that's so much nicer. And they've seen it so, of so many more breeds in group competition, the best show competition, they're all over angulated. Mm. I think it's a common, it is a common fault in show dogs in general to have straight straight upper arm and shoulder construction and over angulated behind and they're trained yep. to show exactly. up in front. Exactly. Um, That's because front's very difficult to breathe. <laughs> and, front's are difficult to breathe. And, and very difficult to judge. Yeah. Oh. Um, and it's, it's so easy to go for a top line and see plenty of angles that can happen to... Oh, it's not just in this breed. No, in all breeds. Yeah. In all breeds. In all breeds. So the, uh, here are judges are really going together and it starts with this look which they want to have on all breeds and this difficulty of understanding a correct front in the various breed breeds for this and for that but it's, it seems to be more difficult to, to say the, the upper arm is wrong, the fore chest, the ribs, whatever than knee and hock and tail set. What we could do, but I, we, could, we could also finish, go for another tea and a piece of pie, uh, a piece of cake. Uh, what we could do is have a look at, at some of the other dogs, see what you want to say, uh, so that we have a bit of a different uh, perspective, and then you will immediately see nice qualities we'd like to see back. So it's all about comparing, and it also proves immediately how difficult it is to, to say, well, this is really what I like, and this, that's why she's the best. Good. not because you see this enormous difference but this will never be of, of a right dog to Bordeaux because what I said earlier if you may remember if a dog has shape and if the just a, this, a, this decent bone and it's all in balance which counts for his body proportions then it's then it's fine so we should not go for more but if, if you're in doubt about shape then just go on top with this one as well you see here clearly in front ribs and a lighter loin and hindquarters. What's 
impressive already that he is very nicely balanced and he is one of the few um, which uh, is not too long. And you could say, well, he still he shows a bit of daylight, but that has to do with his age. So there's a nice balance between front and hind quarter angulation. You see when standing there's not too much there, but many judges would say we well, prefer to see a bit more. But you're not allowed to say anything now. You have to see what he's doing when we move. Um, and there is a bit of forechest there, um, and with his quality of rib, which is, uh, there is quite a bit of, of spring already there, and also quite a bit of length, so there is a, a, you, there is a good expectation that he will get the, the typical front, deep, and, 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 uh, and also below the elbow, despite the fact that he doesn't show it yet. So here is a, a, a nice type in terms of body proportions, and now with another uh, two years, he will look like a very nice dog, I, ex I expect. In terms of head, you see uh, uh, quite a, a well-developed head already. But what I would like to see also with this age is uh, a bit more muzzle. Because he's, he's uh, quite short already. And with, and with, with this head, because he's a very young head still, the, the, the impression of too short a muzzle will only get stronger when later on, because he will get more head, etc. More scalp. What's really nice is his uh, deep stop and eyebrow, plenty of wrinkle. This is a trapezium shape of, of skull. Uh, this is not really there, but it's, uh, as you have read in, in the guest papers, it is a quality we are losing. Uh, so that it's, uh, plenty of talk but don't have to be criticized in that respect. Um, I do like the, the width, uh, and the quality under the eye. Uh, it's, it's, it's not uh, too much. But if he would have more length of muzzle, he also would have more opportunity for length of underjaw and uh, a curve of underjaw to get this real typical expression. So in that respect, there's a bit of a, a Brumestifi look because of this foreface. Yeah, but uh, again, when you look at him, athletic, clean cut, shape, it's just a very young age, but it's all there to develop. So in body, he has, he has plenty of prospects. Give him, give him a round. I also like his dry, clean condition. He's not too fat, it's just uh, all muscles. His steel set is, is uh, uh, as one seldom sees in Dr. Bordeaux. And you, you see, it's a, it's a balanced mover. It's not doing anything spectacular, but it's, all, it's balanced and it's good. He doesn't have this typical going down yet, but he doesn't have the substance yet to need that. So on the move, it's balanced, but still very young looking, and I would say sufficient typical. And this, 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 but this tail carriage, uh, seldom we have to say something about that, because the tail sets are often too low and they never come up. But I wouldn't criticize him because of this tail set, which is rare. And so to say something about it's too high, that would be silly. That would not, uh, yeah, not, would not do any justice. Once again, we really want to praise you for the condition of the dog. Really good. The big guy. So, what do we think of this one? Are we all signers because it's so nice, or don't we, don't we dare? Or <laughs> Excuse me? The depth of chest, I think that is far enough. Yeah. Yeah. And the width. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, go on, please go on. Go on. <laughs> and I think he must have been four chest as well. Yeah. Because I'd like to see a bit more just for his size. Yeah. Having said that, I, I all agree. Um, but we talk, this is to still uh, impressive, yeah. masculine, very typey. And we should not forget that, uh, I agree what you say, but just to, uh, to give him a bit more uh, credit, he's a big dog, he's in the top of the standard. And then still to keep the balance which we look for in terms of an impressive head, and not too long a body, bone, and look at the angulation front and behind, and when we look on the, on the top again, see there's plenty of fortress, plenty of rim, 
with nice, strong, but small ends, a bit narrow loin, hindquarters, and to have this thick quality of bone in his hindquarters, it's all qualities to praise. But I agree, um, to be, uh, and then, then I said, to be hypocritical, indeed, and you have followed the, you have really followed the lessons good this, this evening, you could do with a bit more depth, you could be do with a bit more fore chest. Head-wise, <laughs> what is really nice when you when you look at him, on fast and on uh, profile. One, uh, the, what, yes. Is it? Just the expression. <laughs> It's a very, very nice head, and it's very typical Belgian Bordeaux because what you see here is this eyebrows, this lifted nose, um, this, the wrinkles, the full, the full muzzle, there's quite a bit of chin here. Um, the expression would improve, but what I really want to praise is this, I want to repeat it again, is this stop, but especially eyebrows and lifted nose. Mm -hmm. So this you will never find in a, in a good Bormester. And so in that respect, it's so typical of the breed. And you will never find it in a Master or a Mastina. So what is typical Dr. Bordeaux, he really shouts. Eyebrow, lifted nose. And then also plenty of, of, of chin. He, he, as, as far as I'm concerned, he could do it even a bit more. Um, what I think is a pity, and that respect it, uh, uh, is the, the eye a shape. Uh, it doesn't have real the oval form, so it doesn't give the real standoffish expression. So you talk about a finishing touch, um, but it often goes together in this type of head. So I, I would make a remark about it in terms of would prefer less how, or what I call it, or, but that's about it. You see also plenty of wrinkle here, but um, in the, looking at from the different angles, it, it also differs. So what I've said about too much here, you're not allowed to criticize it because it disappears when it just looks differently. So it's there, but it's not there all the time. And so don't uh, get me wrong here because it shows now and then a wrinkle, because it's very much in the standard. The, the wrinkles should be alike. And it, they have, he has more wrinkles than the average domestic. So it's very typical. But look at the eyebrows, stop and his nose. And his bone, and, and again for his size, he still has this typical set front. And then you go, indeed, a bit more full chest, a bit more depth. And to get this proportion and this size is not easy to get. So you have to praise him. Let him move around. I will say then, uh, I, will, I will help you out here. Um, typical Dr. Bordeaux, in the good way and the bad way. So when he's moving around, it shows type, it could show a bit more in terms of red. So the, if you remember the, the black mask bitch, she was moving. Get, get, get her around one more time. Can you say her show or not? <laughs> <laughs> she can show her head with her head No, I don't want it. No, no, we're not. That's, you can do another job. <laughs> <laughs> she can do both. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. As you saw, she's going more down. Oh, yeah. And she has a lower set, broader mm -hmm. chest yeah. length. So there you, then you get the type. But still, it's typical. It's not untypical. But the way he, he moves up and down, and it's for group and all round judges it's easy to criticize, but I can tell you to have this kind of movement, also in terms of correctness, in 
uh, is already quite pleasing in, in this high, highly typical dome. So you, you may criticize it for your own good reasons, but no, especially what he's doing behind. I'm not trying to defend him, but it's already quite easy. You can come up with plenty, which, uh, which, are, uh, which don't have this quality, but still move worse. Yeah, exactly. Well, I would like to have the images, if possible. We don't have any more dogs, eh? To get the bitches on one of the <laughs> and what I would like is the heads there, two the heads, so we're not going to show them like we normally do in Dr. Boy, so heads over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Just one last. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were playing dead as well, because if you haven't come up, then that'd be good. How old is the one in the back? Two years. And she was 14 months, eh? 15 months. And the one in front? 18 months. 20 months? Yeah. Four years? Yeah, nearly. Okay. Right. What would you like to say? Four nice bitches. That's what I would like to say. Mm. Feminine, not too big, showing the right size to get the right proportions which the breed uh, desires. If, if for her age, she is uh, very impressive, giving a finished picture, also with plenty of strength, very, very well put together. Mm. I would like to make a remark, though, as we have talked about it earlier, about her angulation in the yeah. uh, That uh, many people would say, oh, that's, that's uh, plenty. I would say it's too much. And certainly, if it goes together, if you have to put aside a bit in the construction, the tail step could be higher, and it's that combination which uh, makes it uh, so. This uh, kind of balance, and certainly of this one, and it also counts for her, I prefer. But what is very impressive is the front part, her, her underline, and, and she has a very strong uh, willis, back and wounds, so it's all there. Plenty of gold, but still you have an impressive bitch, but it's still feminine. It's not in the like best in terms of balance just silhouette how it all comes together excuse me yeah and see in terms of angulation behind they don't need much and she has I think her, the, her main quality is her front and if you get the front and the lip wide right you almost have to the whole the and look at the underline. They all have typical underlines, but she has the best. She has that real nice, not slow, but nice curve in the underline. This is an underline which will become really nice, but she shows a young age. Now, we come with, now she's already uh, below her elbow, and she has, she has a very young tuck up, so to speak, so, so she has to drop there a bit, but it only will get better, but it's very typical. She is also typical. But she already gives it uh, an underline of a, of a finished pitch. And it's what, uh, what, what really shows is the strength. As a real, that's what we, I think what we call with the dog, what we want with the dog of so, substance, strength, and, and still athletic. Still that clean cut. Here again, 
again, and so what but counts for all four of them that they are real athletes. They all have shape. They all are dog de bodo. None of them is bull mastiff. None of them is a mastiff or a Leo, very dog very dog de bodo. And then the main differences are in the head, as always. <laughs> and I've as you've understood, I praised her body, except for her knee and hock. But um, her head is uh, not that good, but she has a very strong head, I should say. But her muzzle, muzzle finishing, that's again, you have heard me ma say many times this, you've heard me say many times this evening how important this finish is in the, in the muzzle to get this dog a face, and she is the one who's lacking it. So she has the depth of stop, she has the eyebrow, but she has also a lot of width in the muzzle, a lot of depth. So. A dog the, and a bull mastiff and a mastiff will really be proud of it. But she has also quite a bit of wrinkle, which is dog the bodoi. But if you look at her nose placement and the finishing of under jaw, then it's not that tiny. It's very nice a mastiff or a molosser, but she doesn't have the finishing of a dog the bodoi. But it's don't get me wrong. We talk about finishing. It's never a reason to say, well, that's why she she never can become a champion. That's, He's too good in all other parts to say to do that. And we talk about differences. Um, <coughs> well, that's the way they are normally shown. I don't know how they show them in Australia, but that's the side on. Please keep it that way. <laughs> because the, in, on the continent, it's and in America also, they show them as bulldogs. And it's also what's happening with bullmasters, and I don't like it. But anyway. So again, you can see, real nice eyebrow, lovely eye placement, deep stop. And, and then, then you should say, please, a bit higher nose, placement, and this finishing of under. This breath, we do not like. Uh, excellent bone, by the way, for... Uh, you see, oh, and there's a bit of correction there. Um, this is still okay. Should not be any more in terms of what peasants and feet are doing. So there's a bit of weakness there. But so I, I wouldn't uh, criticize it too high. I also want to see what she's doing. This is still okay. This is better. You can see uh, if you look at all these. I, pr I prefer her expression. And why is that? What is she happy? What the other ones don't have? Exactly. Excuse me. Uh, if she's having it or not. Well, what do you mean? Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 Exactly. Because now, now you see how it works. If you compare her to the others, she has the smallest head. And. Um, but just this look, and, so, and the, the other ones are all showing uh, characteristics in terms of depth of stop, eyebrow, eye placement, it's all very dog de bodo -y. But she's the only one with just this bit of chin. And we, we criticized her earlier, please a bit more nose placement, so the male we had, had that what she doesn't have, but just this chin, combined with this deeper stop and eyebrow, immediately dog de bodo -y. <laughs> Besides that, she has a typical set front, and you see a, a bit of, uh, uh, despite the fact that she's doing this with her, still you can see strong pastors, so there's no weakness in it. And her age, because you can see she has plenty of spring of rib, the uh, confirmation is there to even get a deeper front, it just has to develop. And it's, uh, so it's all there, nice and tidy. And this is an athlete, this is not a dog, a dog in, overdone in any way. And even when she's four or five or six, she still will be nice, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Look at it, it's all balanced. Tail set could be a bit higher, but strong loins, no, uh, no roachy back there. And this amount of tail, this, this tail set, which you could say, well, a bit higher, doesn't disturb me. And I'm sure she will do a nice run. We'll see you later. We already talked about her, so that this is the uh, very nice front, and just a bit more finish here, and then we are there. 
as I, I would make a remark uh, with her size of ears. It's, it's a detail, it's uh, in the same category as color, but sometimes with this finish, that you say what, what, what the expression is doing, then I would say, eh, I would prefer a, a smaller one. It, it helps to give a bit uh, droopy expression because of the lack of lip, the lack of, <coughs> lack of chin. It comes together. The young lady here, uh, excellent uh, width between the eyes, stop, eyebrow, very nice. She could perhaps do with a bit more uh, uh, furnishing, a bit more wrinkles. Could come because she's still young. I like her full face in terms of length. And she, and if you see, she has a bit, a bit of uh, before the, the. So she is clearly on the shot, but still she doesn't have this exact finish of chin mark. But what, what I really do like about her is, and to prove that you need a certain length of muzzle to get a certain depth and a certain quality. So the finishing might not be there, but it shows that there is plenty of strength without being too much. Now what you feel here are joints. So there's not thick litmus there, not that. And, and, and this, if you take it like this, then I have the expression. I have to hold it a little bit down, and the expression is gone. So you can help a bit. Lift your head up. You see the difference? Yeah. Look at the size of teeth. That's what I mean. Length of jaw, length of jaw, there's plenty of uh, depth, not too much, and then quality of teeth, what seldom comes across nowadays. Proves the fear. Getting not too short. For her size, her overall type, very strong bone. Without being uh, too much, you have this, and nowadays you see this fleshy kind of bone, which also in draft horses, too much. And so this is uh, strong and still uh, and clean. Again, also strong feet and pestles. Look at her, look at her height, what's turning around. As one seldom comes across, the width. This is this is the, the width of the height is what you normally get in the domestic not the body. He shows her her young age too, and I hope she will get a little more. I say I hope because her lip, her ribs are not that long and are a bit flat here. She should do a bit more full chest. So. When judging now, I would say still a bit immature. <coughs> I would be very impressed with what's offered here. But I, I am in doubt <coughs> if she ever will get this ribs and underlying bones. She's like here behind the apples. And this is a, a sign. This, uh, all right. Um, to end, let's, let's uh, yeah, we'd like to see the movie. Just take them one by one. Just give her a word,
Which one do you expect? Really? <laughs> Why? No movement. Why move? Oh. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, I can understand why you go for her if you uh, I think she, she might be the the, win, the overall winner in terms of movement. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But needs more substance to come with age. So very promising young yeah, lady. It's a bit too light in there. Thank you very much. So what, what, what I, I, she would be my um, second. Yeah, I was talking overall. Yeah. Yeah. I would, this would be my first in movement. This one, she would be my fourth in movement. This would be my third. But this has to do with age. It's typing, but it's at least more strength. This one, for her substance and her strength, and then to show this typical gait, I praise a lot. Here I see balance, but I also see, well, it's really easy going, quickly, but very easy going because she is rather light. And, all, and despite her age, she is of a different kind than what she is. So she will, um, well, I don't know, of course we have to be able to talk about predictions here, but she gives a very impressive picture, very strong, strong form, plenty of substance, still feminine, and all that I have to praise when she's moving, because then she moves more typical like a dog. And that lead, in second uh, instance, but first, very, very uh, powerful, plenty of substance. And then when you have this typical movement and still sound, you have to praise it about this. This is a bit too... Okay. But if you then say, well, we're going to end up with this uh, young bitch overall because she just is finishing, nice movement, etc. Very well. I can't accept her breathing. <laughs> I can't accept the noise. <laughs> Very right, and I'm, I'm pleased that you said so. As an athletic dog, yeah. that's true. Yeah. And then it's, it's yeah, strange where you, with this kind of a head. It's a stress. Okay. Because you, you can't explain it because of what you see. <laughs> Your nostrils are open. There were some, uh, there were some questions uh, about n nostrils, and you see quite a bit of, of uh, differences here. Uh, but the, uh, it's, it's no mistake, it's in the standard very clearly, the nostrils should be large and open. And there are plenty who are too small and too pinched. And these ones are still um, quite okay until very good. So, enough. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.